Hi again, it's Michael from Fujifilm. In today's episode, we're going to do a bit of a follow-up from the last workbench that I did that was about perspective and how it's different than focal length. Today we're going to talk about how focal length relates to sensor size. Now there is a commonly held belief that sensor size determines your depth of field. That's not actually true. It's your optics that determine your depth of field. So I'm going to be showing you a bunch of images that were recorded on GFX 100 using the GF 45 to 100 millimeter f4 lens and XH2 using the XF 16 to 80 f4 lens. So you'll be seeing a bunch of photographs and it's important to say right now you understand that everything was recorded at the exact same f-stop. I used f4 in all the images you're going to see on both cameras. All right, first um, I want to talk about angle of view. So the human, you know, visual system uh, can see a lot. Actually, you know, if you hold your hands all the way out to the side, you can actually make out your fingertips almost about 180 degrees apart. It's probably somewhere around 180, uh, 160. Now, they may not be super sharp, but you can see them. You can make them out. So that's one way to say that's your angle of view. But a camera only has one lens, one eye. It's not stereo. So therefore, we have to relate it more to seeing with one eye. So when you hold your hands out in front of you and look at it with just one eye, it's probably somewhere around 50 degrees, 45, something like that. However we also tend to only see sharply in the very center of that angle of view, or we call it the area of interest. Our brain only cares about what's really close to the center, and things on the edges are kind of fuzzy. So in order to see something sharp, what we do is we move our eyes. We go to fixate on something else that we want to see sharply. So there's a little bit of debate about where you actually measure the human angle of view. But we have a fixed focal length. Okay, We cannot zoom our lenses. So a lens, any lens, has an angle of view out the front. There's a cone of vision that it sees from the front. But then it projects an image out the back onto the sensor. So you've got a cone in the front, you have a cone on the back. So that rear circle is the projection, and that can vary depending on the sensor size on how much of that circle you see. So if I have a circle of a fixed size, and I crop part of it out, what's going to happen is it's going to narrow the angle of projection that I'm actually recording. And by narrowing it on the back, effectively what I see out the front is also going to be narrower. So this is what changes when you change focal length. You're changing the angle of view. That's what you're doing. To, re to repeat from the last time, you're not changing your perspective. So I use that word crop. So let's clarify that term crop. So APS-C sensors are smaller than 35 millimeter film 24 by 36 sensors. Therefore, they're recording a smaller part of that image projection. So it's a cropped image circle. That's where the term crop sensor comes from. But what about an M4 thirds sensor? It's even smaller than an APS-C. So M4 thirds is cropped compared to APS-C. What about the sensor in this camera? Hmm? That is really tiny. That is way, way, way more cropped even than an M4 third sensor. So think about the advantages you might have when you want to get more serious about photography, about maybe using a camera in addition to your phone, because you will get more creative choices. All right, let's go in the opposite direction. A full frame 35 sensor is much smaller 
than our GFX, which is more than full frame. It's bigger than full frame. Therefore, 35 millimeter full frame is a cropped sensor compared to that. Okay, so to illustrate, first I put GFX into the three by two aspect ratio. So it would match the APS-C sensor on the XH camera. Uh, I set the resolutions to be as close as possible. It's 10 megapixels in one, 11 me megapixels in another, and that was to avoid any kind of effects of resolution on what I was getting. So the first thing I did was camera fixed in one position, or I should say the tripod fixed in one position, and I set the two different cameras to get as absolutely close to the same left and right frame edge as possible and matching the height of the subject as much as possible. So yes, there's maybe a 1% difference here or something. I was doing it off of the LCD. There's nothing scientific here about calculations, but in order to make them come out the same framing, I had to use two different focal lengths. So on the GFX, it was like 80 millimeters, and on the XH, it was like 38 millimeters. And you can get the same sort of uh, difference now if I go to 100 millimeters on the GFX, and then it's about 48 millimeters on XH. But the point being, same camera position to get the same angle of view, with different sensor sizes, you must use different focal lengths. And what happens with different focal lengths at the same f-stop is look at the backgrounds. This is part of what people talk about when they talk about that large sensor look, is the depth of field is much shallower because it's a longer focal length. So you get that softer depth of field makes your subject stand out more. All right, second illustration. Keep the same focal length. I moved the camera a tiny bit, but I put both of them at 80 millimeters. Both of them are at 80 millimeters. Notice the GFX feels and sees much wider at 80 millimeters than the APS-C sensor. Okay, same thing what we said, smaller and bigger cone of light coming out the back. Same focal length, different angles of view. Forget the edges for a second. Try to concentrate on the middle of the frame and look at the depth of field in the background, that fence in the back and those foliage in the back. And what you notice is they're almost absolutely identical. There's the same amount of softness, both in the XH at 80 millimeters and in the GFX at 80 millimeters. And to prove that, I actually took the GF frame and I recropped it and resized it in Photoshop to match the capture coming out of XH. And here you can see side by side, the depth of field is absolutely virtually identical. Why? Because it's 80 millimeters and 80 millimeters, both at f4 without changing the focus and without moving the camera. The third thing I did was, okay, I'm going to uh, leave the same focal length, but now I want to match the angle of view. So in order to match the angle of view with the same focal length, the camera needs to be in two different positions. Remember how much wider GFX saw at 80. But because they're in two different positions, the feel of the image is no longer the same, okay? Because it's different perspective, as we learned last time. Look at the relationship of the cupid to the wall in the background, and look at how the fence post and the tree branches all line up with each other because we changed the angles, we changed the geometry of where the camera was positioned. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Thanks for joining me, I'll see you next time.